Congressional candidate, State Representative Mike Johnson is right here. Hey, Mr. Michael, how are you this morning? Hey, my friends. Good to hear your voices. Um, the big news this weekend. Okay, I never imagined this. The FBI director now has eliminated Hillary from any further FBI investigations again. This is my own editorial, and you can add your own. The lawlessness continues. That's the best way to summarize it, Robert. You're exactly right. It's outrageous. I mean, if Hillary Clinton was anybody else, she would be in jail already. If it was any of us. And, and that's the problem with this whole system is that they're undermining the very rule of law. And, and when you do that, people begin to lose faith in the system, in our country, that, that, that justice really is equal and blind. I mean, if you're the Clintons, you get a, you get a different set of rules. And it's it's not fair, and everybody knows that intuitively. So there's plenty of evidence to indict her. There's plenty of evidence to put her in prison. But it, it appears that that's not going to happen unless we get a, a new commander-in-chief. And, is, and I think it's, is there any reason to believe, and this is how we do the segue into the congressional race, you and I have mm -hmm. talked about this on numerous occasions, the Republican leaders in Congress just seem to have rolled over repeatedly for President Obama. Why should we believe that with the current leadership, they won't roll over for Clinton? It's a very, uh, very good question, and it's something that should concern all of us. I mean, we, you know, the, the Republicans have control of both houses of Congress. It, it shouldn't matter whether you have the White House or not. That would be nice if we had all three. But, but at least if we're controlling the Congress, we should, we should push a conservative agenda. We should fight for the rule of law. We should, we should make sure, at a minimum, that the law is equally enforced. And they, they haven't done that. I mean, they have not exerted the authority that the voters of this country gave them. And so it, it's the reason that Congress has such a low approval rating. People go out and they campaign on these, these ideals and these, these, these platitudes and sound bites, and they don't follow through with them when they get to Washington. And that's why I've said in this race, here in our fourth congressional district race, you better look at the record of every candidate and not the rhetoric. I mean, okay. anybody can say anything during an election cycle, but go look what they've actually done for the last 10 or 20 years, and that's the best way to determine how they're going to lead in Congress. Oh, okay, Mike. They don't get anything done. It's great sound bites, and, and you, you give great sound bites, too. How does Mike Johnson get anything done? It's a mess in Washington. You're going to be one guy if you're elected. Yeah, I, I'll be one guy, but, but here's the thing, Aaron. We showed this in Baton Rouge. You know, I, I got elected to the legislature, y'all know less than two years ago we went down there and we stood on our core principles I, I make i make a joke when i'm in these big forums i say i was four inches taller when i got elected to the legislature and it's it's largely true because we went down there and they just hammered on us but there was a group of us in the house about 22 is what we began with in the first special session this year who stood rock solid against all the tax increases and all this big government largesse and by the time we got to the second special session we had grown our ranks to over 40 the, the idea is that, that when you show backbone, it inspires backbone in others. You said, and I'll just, uh, the quote was, conservative agenda. For anybody that might not know, what is the Mike Johnson conservative agenda? My agenda is to get back to the founding principles that made America great. And that is the, 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 the fundamental ideas of limited government, lower taxes, less regulation. The, the, the protection of the sanctity of human life, the protection of our Second Amendment values that we, we cherish so much, and religious freedom, the right of conscience, all these things that, are, that have been under direct assault over the last eight years under o Obama and that administration, we've got to get back to defending and preserving and advancing the ball on those things again. When we do that, when we preserve and advance conservative principles and ideals, it's what's best for the country what's best for people individually and all of us collectively and, and we should do that without any apology at all when you say limited government that that's kind of code word that means mike we got to cut some jobs we have too many federal jobs too many federal agencies you know it, it, call a spade a spade that's what it means huh in, in large part that that's a big that's a big issue look aaron the government is is too large it's doing too many things and what it does it does not do well this was not what the founders envisioned. We were supposed to have a limited federal government, and now it's grown so much. It's like a it's like a monster. And and everybody, you know, the Democrats say, let's just keep feeding the beast. The only way to get that thing back down to a manageable size and, and live within our means is to starve it a little bit. And and you have to make some tough choices to do that. We have we have endless numbers of 
bureaucratic positions and new agencies and new divisions of government. And, and we don't need all that. We've got to carve it back down to a manageable size because the thing that we're doing right now is not sustainable. We're going to run out of money. Look, 2030 is the year. The Congressional Budget Office, they're the nonpartisan group. They say we run out of money in 2030. Now, we know we have a $19 trillion federal debt right now, which can virtually never be repaid. But in 2030, our annual spending eclipses GDP. That means we won't even have $1 left to provide even for national defense, which is a constitutionally provided responsibility of the federal government. So we have to address it now. We can't kick the can down the road. We've got to go in and make difficult choices and, and get this thing back to a manageable size. Pardon me, Mike, but when you talk about big and expanding and encroaching government, I think of specifically Obamacare, which is on the verge of unraveling of, of complete bankruptcy in so many states. I know Arizona, it was a 116% rate increase for people with the, with the federal government, with, the, with the, uh, the Obamacare policies. And now that it's unraveling, the solution on the Democrat side is uh, just let the government take over the whole thing. Yeah, they, they wanted a single-payer system from the very beginning. I mean, President Obama said that in his own words. Hillary's in favor of that as well. But look, that, a single-payer system is a disaster. It leads to rationed care. It takes the competition completely out of it, the free market principles, out of the, the equation entirely. And that's a disaster. What we've got to do is repeal and replace Obamacare in its entirety. I mean, every word of it. I heard you guys were interviewing one of my opponents in this race uh, earlier in the last hour, and, and, and he kind of equivocated on that. Look, we're going to repeal it on day one, every word of it, and replace it with a new system that is market-based and patient-centered and gets the bureaucrats in Washington out of the doctor-patient relationship. That's how you fix the health care system. You apply those free market principles, and I think we can do that. Hillary surrogates have intimated, hinted that in her first 100 days, she may do an executive order that would grant amnesty to 20 plus million illegal immigrants. Holy cow. Holy cow is right. We'll fight her tooth and nail on that every every uh, inch of it. Look, amnesty is a, is a terrible idea. Uh, when you do that, what you do is you send a signal around the world that you can come here for free. The law doesn't apply and all that nonsense. Look, I, you all know you watched the saga in the last legislative session. Jeff Landry and I, the attorney general, fought for the ban on sanctuary cities in our state. We wanted to ban funding, state funding for New Orleans because they were trying to uh, create this sanctuary city policy, basically allowing illegals to come in and, and find safe harbor in, in, in the city there that they wouldn't enforce the law. It's a terrible idea. We know the poorest border on the South is, is uh, people are just coming in at will, and a lot of them are dangerous people. They're terrorists who mean us ill. I mean, this has now become a dangerous situation. It's a threat to national security. You can't give amnesty to all the illegals. It means, again, we're going back to the central theme here, they're undermining the rule of law in this country. John Adams said, we're a nation of laws, not of men. We have to maintain the rule of law. It's what makes us America. It's what makes us the exceptional nation that we are. And we move away from that at our peril.